Hi everybody and welcome to Butt Thoughtics Learn on YouTube or Telegram, wherever they're going to see this. Um, I'm Linda Salter and I'm sharing with you another video. Uh, this one we're going to start talking about the structures of the nerves um, and blood vessels as well. Um, I am the creator, inventor of Butt Thoughtics Wedge to level your hips while seated. Um, which is great for pain, neck pain, back pain. Uh, it's also helped people with uh, get rid of headaches and it, how it works. It works instantly. You know right away if it works for you. Uh, it's easier to tell when you have discomfort or pain. If you don't and you don't feel it right away, you don't really want to shim. But uh, now since I've discovered this, I've uh, been testing people in my uh, practice here at the clinic for about two and a half years so I've seen a lot of things and it also set me on a quest for a lot of information on what the heck why is somebody's headache going away when they're sitting on this six millimeter wedge here okay under half their hip to level their hips uh, so that's what I want to share with you that's why I started this channel uh, it's not just about butthotics Although it is a great product, if you sit a lot and you have headaches, pain, uh, you might want to try it. Uh, you can go to butthotics.com and uh, we sell two wedges in a box. Um, again, it doesn't work for everybody, but it works great for a lot of people. Uh, and if you're sitting a lot, it might be something you want to think about, whether it's uh, driving, uh, you're a student, you're, you work at a desk. Uh, for lots of different things but uh, it's really incredible though uh, the information that's out there that we don't really know about uh, the only reason I know about it is because I had to know why certain things were happening when people were sitting on the wedge and for some the some that don't it doesn't work some people be, and I know it's because they have something uh, wrong in their spine somewhere uh, that they had either nausea while sitting on it or more pain. Uh, they also had dizziness or other little things going on when they sat on it. So uh, for most people, it's going to help. But we're going to talk about why somebody's headache disappears when they're sitting on a wedge. How can that do that? It has a lot to do with the structures of the nerves and that's what we're going to talk about today and how easily they can get damaged especially in your neck but anywhere in your spine so let's go to the first image here so here we have some pretty simple images um, and i want you to think of your nervous system the structures of it okay we're not going to talk about all the functions of the brain and everything today we're going to look at the structures and so here you have the brain you see this person here and you have a large cable that comes off of it that is attached to it a main cable down the middle and it splits up to, into two main cables down the back of the legs all the way down to the feet okay and in between you have all these uh spinal nerves peripheral nerves that come out and in the head here so right above uh, the hole in your skull there which is called that hole at the bottom of your skull lets that spinal cord out and that hole is called the foramen magnum and above that foramen magnum sits the uh, brain stem so um, uh, this brain stem is very important because here you have spinal nerves on this brain stem not only is it made up of billions of specialized tracts it also houses 12 cranial nerves that help your whole head function and a lot of your body and your body systems. Now, uh, because of great scanning systems they have out there where you can move your neck backwards and forwards in movement, so dynamic as opposed to static, whereas you're not moving, you know, you get a, a brain scan, they scan this laying down and, uh, you know, they might see some things in here that they don't like, but they don't they don't really scan this part and uh, when you think about it this part here goes uh, especially the bottom part can have some descending and going through that big bony hole and if you have bad posture it can easily get damaged and all these nerves out here uh, 
when you look at the next spine where they come out they can easily get damaged there so uh we're going to talk about so how is this wedge going to alleviate your pain so if you look at this person they are standing they're not sitting but it's kind of the same standing and sitting a lot of people are uneven you know in other studies i've read you know if it's under four millimeters don't even worry about it and uh if you have the same length legs don't shim you know there's everybody's different and uh there's no whole consensus it's a bit of a controversy this stuff but nobody's ever done it for a sitting position so that's what i discovered and when i started using it i i a lot of people were being helped by it it started off with oh my low back pain's going away my neck pain then my headache's going away why is this shim causing this headache to go away so if you look at all the nerves here um they can get pulled down if your hip is uneven they can get pulled down with that hip so you know when you sit for a long period of time and you go you get up and you go oh and it takes a few steps and then you're okay well that's because you're overstretching those nerves and they're not getting enough blood and oxygen and when you stand up the blood comes rushing in and feeding those nerves and you feel okay but over time you can actually damage them so uh that's how the shim takes the excessive stretch because remember these nerves here are connected to that which is connected to that so they're all one piece even the ones down here are attached all the way up to there okay and the brain computes everything sends the messages to do this and this or to censor what's going on here and here and then sends the messages back up now if they're being damaged either on the way down or back up you're going to have dysfunction somewhere now you think of nerves i say the word nerve what do you think all right i say nerve you think pain well what else do nerves do or better question what don't they do they do everything you can't blink you can't think you can't fart you can't do anything without a nerve signal getting to the target area okay and then that and then that uh nerve that has to go back up to your brain too and tell it what's going on so if there's and when you see what's going on in the neck and how like there's two millimeters of space in between a nerve a major nerve and or blood vessel and a bone you can see how easily things can get damaged and uh, there's lots of wonderful information out there basically uh, uh, you know how so many people are suffering they go from doctor to doctor the doctors can't figure it out why is that it's because they're not looking in the right place and uh, like there's great doctors out there like dr. Fraser Henderson who's one of the most published uh, neurosurgeons and I've studied with him from him <laughs> not with him not yet but uh, I've learned so much from him and he says it too. Now because of these scanning systems, uh, we can see the damage coming off the neck due to let's say cervical instability. And once we fix that, they do surgery. Uh, then a lot of the other neurological issues go away. So um, same with Dr. Ross Hauser from Caring Medical. I love him. He puts out the greatest videos. What he does, he doesn't do surgery. He will inject your uh, ligaments first to look at you through these scanning systems where you can bend forward and backward and they can see what's going on they'll correct your posture and then they'll inject the ligaments around your spine to help stabilize the spine because you have instability in there so there's too much movement and they can see that when you're moving they can't see that when you're just sitting still so uh, it's basically people with the proper scanning systems that know all this stuff and uh, modern medicine today sorry guys uh, they don't look at this at all if you think of your organs as a toaster i was talking about the line card okay what's the first thing you're going to do i tell you this toaster is broken what are you going to do the first rule of troubleshooting this toaster it's always check the line cord right but in our bodies we don't do that so you have heart palpitations let's say and you go to the doctor, they put the monitor on you, or you have, uh, you know, something wrong with your heart. They can't find anything wrong with your heart, but you're still suffering these symptoms. So maybe, 
And when you find out where these nerves come from, especially the vagus nerve, which comes out of, if you put your finger behind your ear, there's a little hole there, like a pocket. He comes out right around there in front of C1, which has kind of a, got a hook on it. And um, if your posture is off a little bit, you can actually irritate. Every time you move your neck, you can be irritating your vagus nerve, which is your rest and digest nerve. Um, so if he's getting damaged, what does the vagus nerve do? Your rest and digest. And uh, so let's say you have two, you have those two parts of your nervous system, right? You have your fight or flight, rest and digest. Fight or flight system, uh, which the nerves are mainly, or the cell bodies, the brains of these nerves are between your neck and your low back. Um, your fight or flight, he wants you to run from the line, right? So if let's say there's a line there, that's what that system does. It shuts down everything it doesn't need. It makes your heart pump. It makes you able to take in a lot more oxygen. It makes your eyes go, you know, uh, to be able to run from the line. And the rest and digest after the line's gone, he brings you back to normal. Okay, so they're supposed to work like that. But, you know, some people are always stuck in their fight or flight. Why is that? Maybe it's because it's not a tumor. Like you'll look on, on Dr. Google or an infection or... I'm not saying it's not possible to have any of those things, but more often than not, from what I've seen, it's due to nerve irritation somewhere in your neck or in your spine. So um, that's what doctors don't look today. They only look at the toaster. So, uh, and it's really not that difficult. It is really not that difficult. And a lot of these doctors are saying, fix your neck, fix everything. Do you have 10 different issues? You have headaches, but you also have gut problems, uh, ringing in the ears, fluid feeling in the ears, um, dry mouth, trouble swallowing, cold hands and feet, excessive sweating, um, digestive issues, urinary issues, uh, kidney problems. Do you have 10 different issues or do you have one? And a lot of these people, I have talked to hundreds and hundreds now in the last two and a half years, because when they come in with chronic neck or low back pain, they get a whole slew of neurological questions and most of those people answer at least 10 of them that I've mentioned. It's unbelievable, from 15 to 90 something, okay? I see them all. It's unbelievable. I never realized, you know, it was all about pain when you come to a massage therapy clinic. I'm not gonna ask you about your bowel function, am I? I do now. And you'd be surprised to see how many people have these things and uh, in the future video, we are going to talk about hypermobility, hypermobility spectrum um, disorder or syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos, uh, these connective tissue problems because people that are hypermobile, very flexible, are four to ten times more likely to have instability in their spine and have these issues. Why are 15 year olds having anxiety, gut problems, all these health issues? It's not because of what we're told most of the time. It has to do with the neck. And when everybody's doing this all day, eventually you start to deteriorate the structures that hold your neck together properly and give you a nice C curve and your C curve deteriorates and then all sorts of things can happen. Now, not everybody suffers from this. I'm 54, I don't have any of these issues. I'm very lucky apparently, and apparently this is not normal. I never have acid reflux, I never have headaches. I don't, you know, I can't say I've, I've heard ringing in my ear, but it goes, it comes and goes. I've had, you know, bad stomach once in a while, but that's kind of normal, right? You eat like crap, you're gonna feel like crap. Why is it? That some people can eat perfectly and exercise great and they still suffer because we're missing this part of the equation and follow the neurology is not that difficult so again lead structures so um let's see here we got look at the neck here see and these are just some and so vagus nerve comes out there um, oh, and look at the brainstem here. Now, the brainstem is 
there's few things that can be happening. You know, when you sit with your head forward at the desk all the time, you can actually pull that down through your through your foreman magnum. It doesn't belong below that hole right here. It does not belong there. And when it does descend there and you start turning your head around, you could have all sorts of funny symptoms. Um, now, a lot of these neurological symptoms overlap, so can you tell if it's this, or is it a cranial nerve that's coming out the side here that's getting banged around? Are your headaches caused by fluid flow problems? Um, but overall, it's a lot easier to fix than we think if we just know what we're looking for. So I have a lot of people now, when I fix their back, I fix their gut problems, I fix their acid reflux and their headaches, uh, I fixed urinary incontinence. I've helped with, I don't know if you've ever heard of SIBO. Um, SIBO is uh, overgrowth small of the small intestine, small intestine uh, bacterial overgrowth. And um, we, what causes that? That's because the vagus nerve is not working properly. Just like uh, uh, intrinsic factors. So what causes B12 deficiency? Anybody know? Anybody ever check Dr. Google? Well, um, they don't really talk about that. They just say B12 deficiency causes pernicious anemia, right? Well, in order to make, uh, to absorb vitamin B12, you need to have intrinsic factor. Uh, it is necessary for the absorption of vitamin B12 uh, later in the dissolute to absorb. So um, the parietal cells, which are stimulated by the vagus nerve, uh, stimulate the secretion of this uh, uh, intrinsic factor. If you don't have intrinsic factor, you cannot absorb the B12, okay? So, uh, secreted is also present in gastric juices. Okay, let's go to vagus nerve. And I'll show you here. So, vagotomy, that's where they cut the vagus nerve. They used to do that for pep people who suffered peptic ulcers. They don't do that anymore, uh, I don't think. Um, I've read studies where uh, in animals, uh, they cut one vagus nerve and uh, the animal is always sick. They cut two and the animal dies. You cannot live without both of them. And sometimes people have surgery. So uh, they can, these nerve structures can be damaged during surgery too. Uh, but um, the procedure, okay, so where does it say? One serious side effect of cutting a vagus nerve is a B12 deficiency later in life. Okay, similar to pernicious, the vagus nerve normally stimulates the stomach's parietal cells to secrete acid intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is needed to absorb vitamin B12 from food. The vagotomy reduces the secretion and ultimately leads to deficiency. Okay, which is uh, can be dangerous, right? It can cause nerve damage, tiredness, dementia, paranoia, ultimately death. Okay, so there's a lot of information out there. I'm going to put it to you in a way that nobody else will too because nobody's ever done this research with uh, um, a butt thotics like I have. So um, stay tuned for more videos. I'm very excited to share. I'm going to get into more specifics in the next ones. Um, but yeah, uh, stay tuned and uh, thanks for watching. And uh, hit that if you're on YouTube, hit that like and subscribe button, okay? I'll be putting out lots more in the near future. All right, thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.